Kuzangbo and welcome to Bhutan e-learning project. I am Mikmat Sring, teacher from Jishong Central School. This economics lesson is intended for key stages four and five, classes ranging from nine to 12. Today, I will be taking you through the method of measuring price elasticity of demand. In the earlier class, we have defined what is price elasticity of demand and we have derived formula to calculate the price elasticity of demand. Now, in this lesson, we will be focusing on method of measuring the price elasticity of demand. So, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to derive formula to calculate price elasticity of demand using percentage method. You should be able to calculate price elasticity of demand for a good. You should be able to calculate elasticity of demand on the demand curve using point method or geometric method. So now, if you look at method of measuring price elasticity of demand, we have three methods to calculate price elasticity of demand. The first one is percentage or proportionate method. The second method is by using total expenditure method. And third method is point or geometric method. To go in detail, first let us look at proportionate or percentage method. Here you have to keep percentage in your mind. Percentage becomes keyword here. So, in order to calculate price elasticity of demand using the percentage method, so we have here, according to this method, the price elasticity of demand is measured by a ratio of percentage change in quantity demanded to percentage change in price. Now, when we say price elasticity of demand according to the percentage method. It is ratio of percentage change in quantity to percentage change in price of a commodity. So, here we can further simplify this formula. So, here percentage change we can cancel this to percentage. And we have change in demand, new, uh, new quantity demanded minus initial quantity by initial quantity, whole divided by new price minus initial price divided by price of a commodity. So now here Q1 minus Q divided by Q in division of a fraction, you can reciprocal the denominator. So, P divided by P1 minus P. So, now here we have, we can simplify this one again. So, it is change in quantity divided by initial quantity into initial price divided by change in price. So, this becomes formula to calculate price elasticity of demand using percentage method. Okay. So, let us look at one example. We have here example quotient. So, let us try to solve this quotient together. So, we have here formula to calculate price elasticity of demand using percentage method. So, in a quotient, a consumer buys 40 kg of rice at nil term 25. So, quantity, initial quantity here is 40 kilogram and initial price we have here is nil term 25 per kg and now new price is when the price falls down to nil term 25 
P1 equals to 25, then quantity demanded rises to 50. So, we have new quantity that is 50 kilogram. So, now here we can use EP equals to change in quantity demanded divided by initial quantity into price divided by change in price. So, now first we have to calculate what is change in demand. So, change in demand is equal to new quantity minus initial quantity 40 which is equals to 10. And we have here again change in price. Change in price is equal to new price which is 25 minus 20. 20 minus 25. Here you may get answer negative, but you need not have to worry, you can take it as positive. This is just a change. So here the change in price is by 5. So now you can replace this one. Change in quantity as 10 divided by initial quantity 40 into initial price 25 divided by change in price as 5. So, you have here 5 divided by 4. So, 5 divided by 4 is greater than 1. So, you can conclude that here that in the above question, the, uh, it is relatively, relatively elastic, elastic, it is relatively elastic demand. Are you clear with it? So, we have one more question that you have to try it yourself. It's very easy. You have to just solve like what I have solved here. So, when the price of a kilogram of apple increases from Newton 5 to 10, quantity demanded decreases from 30 to 20 kg. Calculate the price elasticity of demand using percentage method. So now here, while solving this question, what are the important things that you have to keep in mind? First one is formula to calculate price elasticity of demand, the final value of elasticity of demand, and interpretation of the numerical value of the price elasticity of demand. So this is how you calculate price elasticity using percentage method. Now, the second method to calculate price elasticity of demand is using total expenditure method. So, here using this method, elasticity of demand is measured by considering the change in total expenditure as a result of change in the price of commodity. Now, how much total expenditure changes due to change in the price of a commodity. We have to consider this concept here. And formula to calculate total expenditure is T e equals to P into Q. Here P is price of a commodity and Q is quantity. Now using this total expenditure method, we have three types of price elasticity. So, first one is elastic demand using total expenditure method. So, now here you have to know the formula to calculate total expenditure which is price of a commodity 
multiplied by quantity of commodity. So, when a fall in price of commodity results in increase in total expenditure uh, or the increase in the price of, of a commodity leads to decrease in the total expenditure, elasticity of demand will be greater than 1. And when elasticity of demand is greater than 1, it is elastic demand. In other words, if there exists in inverse relationship between total expenditure and the price, demand will be price elastic. So now, let us look at one example here for elastic demand using total expenditure method. So in our example, you have a price of a commodity, quantity of commodity, then you have to calculate total expenditure. So, when the price of a commodity is nil term 6 and quantity, nil term, uh, quantity equals to 10 kilogram, then we have total expenditure. Price into quantity, you will be getting total expenditure as 6 into 10, which is equals to 60. Now, when the price decreases to nil term 5 and quantity increases to 13 kilogram, then total expenditure will be 5 into 13, which is uh, 65. Now, important concept that you have to keep in mind is, when the price decreases and your total expenditure increases, there is inverse relationship between price and total expenditure. So, increase in price of a commodity leads to decrease in total expenditure or decrease in price of commodity leads to increase in total expenditure. In such situation, your price elasticity of demand will be greater than 1. That means, price elasticity is elastic demand. What you have to keep in mind? The inverse relationship between price of a commodity and total expenditure, if this relationship exists, then elasticity will be greater than 1. When the elasticity of demand is greater than 1, it says it is elastic demand. Now, second one is inelastic demand now. For inelastic demand, if the price, uh, if fall in the price of the commodity leads to fall in total expenditure or decrease in the price, uh, total expenditure, then price elasticity of demand will be less than 1. The, in this inelastic demand using total expenditure, there is direct relationship between price and total expenditure. When we say direct relationship, increase in price leads to increase in total expenditure, decrease in price leads to decrease in the total expenditure. In such situation, elasticity of demand will be in elastic demand. Example, when the price of commodity is nil term 6 and quantity demanded is 10, we have total expenditure 6 into 10, which equals to 60. And when the price decreases to nil term 5 and quantity demanded increases to 11 kilogram, then we have total expenditure 5 into 11, which is 55. Now, the relationship that you have to keep in mind is when the price is decreasing, if your total expenditure is also decreasing, then we can conclude that your price elasticity of demand is less than 1, which means it is in elastic demand. Once again, the relationship is when the price of commodity decreases, if your total expenditure also decreases and when the price increases and 
total expenditure also increases in such situation your ep will be less than 1 it is in elastic demand now third one is unitary elastic demand so now here when the total expenditure does not change with the uh, change in price of the commodity elasticity of demand is unitary elastic example when the price of commodity is L term 6 quantity demanded is 10 kilogram which means 6 into 10 equals to 60 and when the price of commodity is L term 5 quantity demanded is 12 kilogram your total is uh, expenditure is 5 into 12 price into quantity so 12 into 5 equals to 60 now here the relationship that you have to keep in mind is when the price increases when the price increases or whether the price decreases if your total expenditure remains it remains unchanged then we can conclude that your elasticity of demand is equivalent to 1 so here price is decreasing quantity demand uh, uh, total expenditure remains same or unchanged in this case elasticity of demand is 1 which means unitary unitary elastic are you all with me okay so we have completed total expenditure method here you have to keep in mind for elastic demand using total expenditure method if increase in price of the commodity causes decrease in the total expenditure your elasticity will be elastic demand if your increase in the price of the commodity leads to increase in the total expenditure there is a direct relationship you can conclude that it is in elastic demand increase in the price of commodity has no change in the total expenditure then you can conclude that the type of elasticity is equivalent to one which means unitary elastic demand so now we have one last method to calculate price elasticity of demand that is using point or geometric method according to this method price elasticity of demand <coughs> at any point on the demand curve is measured using formula given below that is price elasticity of demand is lower line segment divided by upper line segment so here we have example we have a demand curve price and quantity <coughs> point a point b point c point d and point e if you are to calculate using point method now the formula that you have to keep in mind is ep equals to lower line segment divided by upper line segment now using this diagram and using this formula let us calculate price elasticity of demand on point a so ep at point a equals to you have lower line segment that is a e a e divided by above a there is no line 
we chose it is 0. So any number divided by 0, you will be getting your answer as infinity. So here, the type of elasticity at point A is perfectly perfectly elastic. Now at point B, E P at point B, you have lower line segment which is B E, B E divided by upper line segment that is A A B. Now here, what you have to keep in mind is which one is greater? Whether B E is greater or a B is greater. Now, if you look at the length of the, the line uh, demand curve here, point B to E has greater length than point A to B. Since B E is greater than A B, if your numerator is greater than denominator, you will always get answer greater than 1. That means, E p equals to E p equals to greater than 1. So, here since B e is greater than A b, since the numerator is greater than the denominator, answer will be always greater than 1. So, when your E p is greater than 1, then you can conclude that it is relatively, relatively elastic demand. Now, on point C, so E P at point C equals to lower segment first, C E, C E divided by A C, A C. Now, if you look at the, the length, C E and A C, we have equal length. A C is equal to C E. So, since C E is equal to A C or when your numerator is equivalent to denominator, you will be getting answer equivalent to 1. That means here E P is equal to 1, which means it is unitary elastic. At point C, your elasticity is unitary elastic demand. Now, at point D, E, P at point D. So, at point D, now it is D, E divided by A, D. Lower segment is D, E divided by upper segment D, A, D, A, D. So, here D, E is D E is smaller than A D. If your numerator is smaller than the, if your numerator is smaller than the denominator, you will always get answer less than one, less than one. Which means when your E P is less than one, your type of elasticity will be relatively. relatively in elastic. And now at point E, E P at point E, the lower segment, we do not have any line below E, right? That means now we have to directly give our lower segment as 0 and upper segment as you have here A a E is your upper segment. So, here 0 divided by any number equals to 0, which means here it is perfectly, perfectly in, in elastic demand. Okay. So, this is how you calculate 
price elasticity of demand on the demand curve using point method. So now, this is for linear demand curve, which means if you have demand curve, straight line, linear demand curve. But usually, demand curve will be a concave curve. So, how to calculate at that point? So now, for nonlinear demand curve, the formula remains same. But what you have to do here is, for example, if you have a linear demand curve, that is linear demand curve, So now, how to calculate price elasticity of demand? Just you have to draw a tangent line, draw a line making a tangent at point uh, R, let's say. So now, your tangent line is A, B. Now, what you have to do is, you have to use same formula to calculate, but the tangent point you have to keep in, remember, you have to keep in mind. So now here, E P equals to R B, R B, lower segment is R B, divided by upper segment you have A R. So now looking at the diagram, since R is in the middle of A and B, if we assume that R A R A R or R B R B is equal to A R A R, that means your numerator is equivalent to denominator. So you will be getting 1, which means e, when E p is equal to 1, you can conclude that on point R, your type of elasticity is unitary elastic demand. Okay. Now, here, price elasticity of demand at R, lower line segment divided by upper line segment if uh, R B divided by A R. Now, here in this diagram, we have let us say R B is less than A R. That means your, your numerator is less than the denominator. Whenever your numerator is less than denominator or when your denominator is greater than the numerator, you will be always getting your answer less than 1. So, at this point, your type of elasticity will be inelastic demand. Okay. Now, I am done with my part. Now, this is your part. So, given below is a demand schedule for, a, for sugar. Estimate the price elasticity of demand for sugar. Using the information given in the table, you will have to calculate the price elasticity of sugar. Second one is, calculate elasticity of demand and identify the elasticity at points A, B, C and D from the diagram. So, you have to calculate price elasticity using point method. So, now let us recapitulate what we have learned today. First, we have learned percentage method to calculate price elasticity of demand. And second, we have learned about calculating price elasticity of demand using total outlay or total expenditure method, where you have to keep, in, keep three things in mind. If your price increases and total expenditure decreases, there is a inverse relationship and you will be getting elastic demand. 
if your price decreases and total expenditure also decreases, then there is a direct relationship you will be getting elastic in elastic demand. The price of the commodity decreases, but there is no change in the total expenditure at that point, you will be getting unitary elastic demand. So the last one was using point method. Here, what you have to remember is the formula that is lower segment divided by upper segment. This is end of our lesson and thank you for being with me. Stay safe at home. Do read books. Thank you. See you in next class.